cost model entry screen is used to accumulate the standard cost data prior to updating the inventory and manufacturing modules with the new cost. Enter a cost model version ID. This can be a date for easy reference or any other code to identify the model version. Then enter a description for the cost model version. There are three tabs for collecting cost data. The purchased item cost tab is used to review and set new standard cost rates for purchased items. The work center rates tab is used to set new manufacturing work center rates. And the manufactured item cost tab is used to set new cost for manufactured items. Let's start with the purchased item cost tab. To automatically increase the existing standard cost by a percent or amount, we're going to select the method, either percent or amount, and enter the percent or amount to mark the current standard cost up by. Then use the select function to import purchased items into the grid. Enter the select criteria and select proceed. This will import the items and the individual warehouses into the grid. Now you'll see it's also imported cost history in the form of the last cost paid for the item, the average cost paid for the item, and the current standard. So in this case we'll see that we marked up the $11 standard cost for the first item by 10% which results in a new model cost of $12.10. Now to deselect any items in the grid again just select deselect enter the select criteria and that will remove those particular items from the grid. You can also enter items individually using the lookup or just by typing the items in. You'll see that the same result has occurred. This current standard cost is $20. The model standard cost would be $22. Now if I want to change that, I can change that manually. So all of the standard costs in the new model that have been created using the cost markup can be changed. Standard model cost can also be determined based on a different cost basis. If we do a drop down you can see that we can also set our new standard cost based on average, last, or replacement cost. So let's select last, go through the process of our select criteria again. Now you'll see that the standard cost has been developed using the last cost paid, in this case $12 for the first item, added 10% on, our new model standard cost is now $13.20. So this is a good way to modify your standard cost in the system using purchase history. Details of the cost model can be reviewed and modified in Excel and then imported back into the cost model. To do that, we select Edit Excel, this will export all the data into an Excel document. Any changes can be made within this document and then imported back in. So let's set this back to $22. And then we'll select Save. Okay, you'll see that that standard model cost now has been updated within the details on the purchased item cost tab. Another factor in standard cost calculations for manufactured items would be manufacturing work center rates. Those rates can be modified on the work center rates tab. Again we have our cost markup option. We can select percent or amount and then the percentage or the amount that we want to mark those rates up. Again, we can use the select function to import work centers into the grid. Okay. On the left side of the grid, you'll see that it's recalculated the new rates based on the percentage that I entered above. If we scroll to the right, we can see the old cost rates in that work center file. And you'll see that 
the new rate for fixed run is 43.20, the old rate was $36. So it's increased that by 20%. And again, we can deselect if we wanted to remove uh, those work centers from the grid. And again, we can add work centers one by one instead of using the uh, select functionality. Work center rate details can be reviewed and modified in Excel and imported back into the cost model. To do that, select Edit Excel. It will export the data into an Excel spreadsheet. Okay, and once again, we can modify the rates and we can select Save. And it has changed the fixed run rate now to $44. Now that we've updated our purchase item cost and work center rates, it's time to calculate the standard cost for all the finished goods affected by the new purchased item cost and or work center rates. To do this, we select Generate MF Item Costs. And you'll see another window comes up and asks if I want to do All Included or As Needed. We select All Included to generate standard costs for all items. We would select As Needed to generate standard costs for only those finished good items affected by a change to purchase items or work centers after the original generation. So we'll select Generate. And it has selected on a where used basis what routings and what finished good items needed to be updated. So in the grid you'll see we have the items, the warehouse, the new standard cost, as well as each cost element for those finished good items. So to do this the system has calculated a bill of material cost roll-up for the standard routing for those finished items. We can continue to modify purchase item costs by adding new items, deleting items from the grid, modifying the model standard cost that we want to use for our new period. We can continue to add additional work centers, delete work centers from the model, uh, modify all of the rates for each one of our work centers. And for manufactured item costs, we can continue to generate our MF item costs. When we want to look at what the effects would be, we can select Model Report. This will show us on a report what's happened. Uh, I've set up one just for the purposes of our demo here where I just want to look at a couple of these items. Now on the Options tab, we can select Summary or Detail. If we select Detail, we can also tell it we want to display labor breakup. Now we can either go to a printer with this or preview it to the screen. Okay, let me make this a little larger for us here. Okay, so you can see in this, here's a finished item, 22600. Uh, tells me all the cost elements. It's broken out all the labor steps here with the new rates. And if I scroll up, it tells me my new item cost is 692 each. The old item cost was 652 each. I have 100 on hand, so the amount of my adjustment would be $4,000. So that's a manufactured item. If we look at a raw material item, same thing on the report. tells me my new standard cost is $24. The old cost was 22 I have 9800 on hand, so the amount of the adjustment would be 19600 It also tells me the valuation method. So each one of these is a standard costed item. So very easy to review what the effects of our cost model will be on our inventory valuation and in our product costing moving forward. If approvals are required for processing cost updates, select Approvals on the Cost Model Entry screen. This will attach an approval requirement to the cost model, which limits the update. The approval process uses the approval types found in Manufacturing Setup. If an approval is attached to the cost model, updates can't be performed until all approval checkbox have been checked. In this case, we have said Cost Accounting, the Controller, and the VP of Finance must all approve of this before this update can be performed. 
The Approved for Implementation checkbox on the Cost Model Entry screen will be grayed out until the approval process has been completed. To update the new standard cost to Inventory and Manufacturing, we would check Approved for Implementation and select Update Costs. Now this should be performed on the day that you want these new costs to take effect. The posting date in the Post Cost Model screen determines which GL period the update will post to. It defaults to the current date but can be changed. To continue, we would select Post Cost Model. As each step is completed, the checkbox will be checked by the process. If the process is stopped or encounters a problem before completion, the remaining steps can be completed later. When all four boxes are checked, the process is complete. If costs are changed for items that are designated with the valuation method of standard, then journal entries are created to account for any change in valuation for inventory quantities on hand. Now multiple cost tier adjustment batches may be created in the process. If we look up the batch ID, we can determine which batch we want to process, and we'll see there are actually three. So we will select each one and continue to process these. Normally you would go to a printer and print these out. I'm just going to go to the screen. And you can see that reports are created. If we look at these reports, some of these items in here may not be standard costs, which is the case in this batch, so there are no entries made for this. The only entries that are made would be for those items that are actually standard costs. Continue on through the batches. Okay. In this instance, there's several messages that we get, and in this case, we do have a journal entry. So we can see this is for a change in an item, one of the items that we looked at, actually. So inventory went up by 19,600, and it's adjusted it to the account that we had defined in the Maintain Inventory account for that item. Okay, we would continue that until all registers have been posted. When the process is complete, all boxes are checked on the Post Cost Model window, and the Cost Model Entry screen is frozen from further processing. When that window is closed, the date implemented is also updated with the date of the Cost Model update. To view cost details for an inventory item, Select the box next to the standard cost on the Maintain Inventory record. This displays all the cost elements associated with that item. To view the cost models, select View Cost Models. In this view, we can see all of the past model versions, as well as the current model version, as well as any future model versions and you can see the cost history for each one of those versions associated with that item. To view Work Center rate history, select View Cost Models on the Setup Work Center screen. And again, in the model view, we can see past cost models, we can see the current cost model, as well as future cost model with the rates that were associated with each one of those cost models to display total history.